Okay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our Skype show. Uh, thank you again to Mayor Gabay and Joe Nahari for arranging this show. And a special, uh, special thanks tonight to Ma'o and family Edry for hosting tonight. And uh, for those listening to the audio, but you can't see the visual. Uh, Edry family put on some nice uh, food on the table. Uh, that's just from Skype camera. Uh, but we wish them a lot of bracha in the house and uh, Hashem bless them. And in fact, that is the, the opening uh, message of this week's parasha of Achnasat Orchim. Um, tonight we're going to be studying Parashat uh, Vayera. Uh, I would like to dedicate tonight's show for Fua Shlema, for Rivka Bachaina, Gabriela Monomi Batlea Malka, and also Alisha Bachaina Bat Rivka. So, is there more about Khumash over there? Yeah. We share? Yeah? So let's just start off with opening parasha. There's a few messages I want to do with, and like I said, Khumash Ben Rashid, it's the, on one, on one side, it seems like the simplest of the five books because it's mainly stories but once you study it you'll realize you know it's, it's very deep and sometimes difficultly complex to explain and to understand uh, but there's always a message for us and that's the Ma'asei Avot Siman Labanim so let me just start off with the first opening Pasuk yeah Bachavod Ahad you want to read for us Vayara Ela Hashem just read slowly we'll explain Hello? Yeah? Oh, is that... Hello, Oriel? Yeah, how are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. We're just starting the beginning of the Parashat Vayera. Alright, so I'm going to just go and get my Chumash. Okay, Bechavot. Bechavot, Bechavot. Vayar Elav Hashem, Belonei Mamre. Vayar Elav Hashem, Belonei Mamre. Vehu Yoshev. Okay, so let's just introduce what we're talking about. Avraham Avinu is there sitting in his tent, and it's a very hot day. He's just already had the Brit Mila, and he made the Brit Mila at the age of 80 years old, at the age of um, 100, and now he's been asked to. He was asked by Kaddish Brachot to do Brit Mila. And on the third day, he's sitting in his tent, and what is he doing? He's waiting for guests. That's what he's doing. He's just doing achnasat rochim, right? Like Mar now, he's got uh, five people in his house eating his food, sitting on his table, making a mess, and they're gonna they hear noise leaving. But Mar is providing for them, and this is a big mitzvah involved over here. And you see that even Akadosh Baruch Hu, he didn't want Avram to be disturbed with guests. He said, "This time, Avram needs to rest." And it was already the third day of the Brit Mila. And the third day is the very most difficult and painful day of the Brit Mila. And you just read the story and you, you see how Avraham Avinu is not interested in himself. He's just making sure that everyone else is happy. Have you got what to eat? Have you got what to drink? So I want to study a little bit this, this parasha. And there's a, I want to talk about a few things and we'll see how far we get tonight, Bezat Hashem. So. I said, Rashi tells us that Akadosh Baruch made it especially hot that day, so no one would come. And then he saw that Avam Avinu was very disturbed, and there's no guests coming. So what does Hashem do? It's excellent. He sends guests. He sends guests for, for Akadosh Baruch he sends him three guests. Now, I just want to focus on one with your attention, on just uh, one part of the... One aspect over here in this in this episode. First of all, we see the uh, Excuse me. The first part is Vayara Elav Hashem. Hashem appeared to Avraham Avinu. That means Hashem is already inside the tent and he's talking to Avraham Avinu, and uh, they're having a discussion. And it, it says Vayisa He lifted up his eyes. Vayar. And he saw, he sees already three men, three guests. Now you see Abraham Avinu, can you imagine, right, he's sitting down, I don't know if he's having coffee or in his, in his tent, he's with Akadosh Baruch Hu. 
So they're sitting together. I don't know why they're discussing something or they're drinking, and they're, they're together with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. is inside the tent of Avraham Avinu, and then he sees guests from far. Now he gets so excited about the guest, he like almost. If we look from the pasuk, he says, "But he sign up." He sees three men. He sees them and he runs towards them. He just runs towards them and comes to invite them to the guest. Now he seems like he's so excited about this opportunity. He almost like forgets that Hashem is with him in the tent. Uh-huh. They're not even saying, excuse me, Hashem. Yeah, he just like goes for the guests, right? This is my people. And Rashi teaches us here something major. We learned from this episode of Avraham Avinu that Gadol Achnasat Orchim Right, so I just want to say that Baal is now hosting tonight but can you imagine how many guests he's got at the table and each one individually would be greater than having Hashem inside the, the tent with him and then, you know, that's something is a message to understand why is that so great you know, what's so important, giving someone, you know, you're giving him a drink, some bamba, you know, what, I don't know if that is akhlas but why is that so necessary? No, does anyone have any ideas? More of the question? Why it's so important that akhlas Oh, you want to make people feel welcome in, in your house? Um, yeah, of course, that, that's a great mitzvah. But we're saying now, Achidush, we're saying Avram Avinu left Akadush Baruch Hu in the house. He's like, Hashem comes down, imagine Hashem comes down from Shomai, from wherever he is, comes into his tent, into your house, right? He's coming into uh, what's Ma's address? <laughs> 11. 11 Guns Club. Mm. Right, 11 Dancing Road. Okay, he's there in the kitchen. And then Ma says, One kiss, I can't, I'm just getting to get the door. Yeah? And then comes Joe and Yaakov and I. And I say I'm sitting there by the pretzels, thinking, okay, where's my old, yeah? Maybe, just because, left of, the maybe because of the reason of Derech Heretz Katma La Torah. Mm-hmm. It's the same weight. Okay, very interesting, God. Um, Which means not. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to share with you one approach. I'm going to share with you one approach, which I heard. And... Maybe we can understand it like this, that Akadosh Baruch Hu, he is a Tov Metiv, right? He's the one who gives us, he gives us everything that we have in life, right? All, all the health that we have, um, the, the food that we eat, you know, the friends that we have, the family that we have, everything is from Akadosh Baruch Hu, and he's the one who's giving. Akadosh Baruch Hu is a Noten, he's a giver. Now, what is greater than being with Akadosh Baruch Hu is being like Akadosh Baruch Hu. So when you are sitting in the presence of Akadosh Baruch Hu, you're still little you and this big Akadosh Baruch Hu giving everything. When you have the opportunity now to imitate Akadosh Baruch Hu and welcome guests into your home, now you are becoming like an act, you're, you're becoming like Akadosh Baruch Hu in a sense that you're coming to give and you're seeing someone needy. Now I, I want to just make a point over here about Akhansat Orchim. You know some people have you know uh, have guests at a Shabbat meal. So who do you invite? You invite sometimes your friends, sometimes your relatives, uh, maybe business associates. That is a different level of Akhnasat Orchim. That's, that's allowed. You're allowed to invite friends for Shabbat. But when talking about Akhnasat Orchim, is looking um, for people that, that are needy. Someone is stranded. Yeah, he's in alone. He's landed in uh, London or Hendon. And he needs a place to go for Shabbat. Or he needs a place to eat. Or someone just stuck. He doesn't know anyone. Now, you don't know him. He's not your friend. You might not even like him. You might look different. Maybe smell different. <laughs> but you invite him into your house. That you're doing, what did, what did Avraham Avinu run for? He went for three people that looked like Arabs in the desert with dust yeah. on their dirty feet. But he said, this is my mitzvah. And, you know, so some people, you know, especially if they're single people, you know, it could be their old, might be older, might be uh, someone who's a single, divorced, or widowed, or orphaned, but people that need places to go, that is the that is your mitzvah of Achnasat Orchim. Right? Now I'm saying, you're, you're allowed to invite your neighbors and their friends, but I don't know if that's called Gedolah Achnasat Orchim Yotem Mekabalaj Pnei Ashkina Right? They've got somewhere to eat, they've got their own family Here you're trying to welcome in someone that is needy Now anyone who's away from home That's someone that you can come and bring into your home and share And that is copying Abraham Avinu Now I want to just make an interesting observation 
Can you look at the Pasuk bet? It says Vaya uh, Vayarats. He saw what does Vayarats mean? And he ran. And he ran. Now well <coughs> it says the, in the Pasuk it says Behu Yoshev Petach Oel. What does Yoshev mean? Sitting. He's sitting. Okay, so now can you imagine Avon being who's sitting down? Now, I don't know if it was a chair or the couch or some pillows, but he's definitely sitting down, right? Now, can you imagine he's sitting down, he just sees them, and then Vayaraz. It doesn't say Vayakom Vayaraz. He got up and he ran. He's like, almost sounds like from the Pasuk, he ran from a sitting position. I don't know if you can imagine such a thing, yeah? but to the start movement, it's almost like in, uh, in the tracks, you know, the, when you've got the Olympic races, right? So they're on the floor. Yeah, and then like boom, go, they shoot, right? From from a sitting not even a sitting position, it's like a crouch. But he full of excitement, it, it doesn't say he he got up but you're calm, but you're up. He just he just ran with his enthusiasm and his his you know his uh, passion for doing the mitzvah, how much he wanted to do it. Now that's just an observation, it's unusual, but look at the continuation. It seems to be that he's in a day a very big rush. Why why is Avram Avinu in a rush? Because he wants to host. He was the okay, so emergency. Do you know what I mean? There's no, there's no fire burning and no one's falling down. Uh, oh, okay. It might take another few seconds. Go on. Yeah, it could be. Because there's no one around. The desert, there were the only people that he has something. to hear them. Missing. One second, one at a time. I can hear two voices. Go on. Go on, uh, oh, okay. No, because he's been waiting and waiting for people to come and no one was coming. Now he sees the opportunity. He's like, well, I can't let them go somewhere else. I don't want them to, like, miss me. Let me go, like, you know, make sure they come my way, not any other way or, you know. Well, so you see, you see three people walking through the desert. They're walking towards you. One of them could be dying or they're all thirsty. It is a bit. It could be emergency. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, so you're saying it could actually be that is a... Uh, no, you don't know. Reference. So you better run. <laughs> Very interesting. I never thought it'd be like that in my own. Very nice. I never thought about it like that. So in the desert, it could be the host. It could be they're still walking. But I see here there's like an extra part of speed in this. Like he's doing more with passion. I want to look at the next continuing up passage. Let's just start. I have one idea. That if, that if, you're, trying to be, if you're trying to be like God, then right. when he's decided to feed somebody and the moment's come, that, that to be fed, it's like it's instant. It doesn't take... Like uh, it doesn't. He doesn't think about it and get up slowly and walk. It's happened already. There's no it's, delaying time. Yeah, so there's no. Trying, there's no. Trying to or that, you need to it's do it as quick as possible. Very nice. I like that, man. So that when you're trying to do a mitzvah, you decided this is what I'm doing. So you just get on with it straight away. It's something called the resort. It's like in Michelle's Shoram. It talks about the resort. Oh, yeah. oh, the mitzvah. Oh, exactly. So that's what I want to talk about. What um, what Ariel was speaking about. Let's read together just a few psukim. <laughs> And then I want to learn a very important lesson of here about, about the result and so Look at this. Uh, oh, do you want to do a good job? Give me it. Give it. Do you want to translate? Yeah, he does. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but I'll, I'll translate. He said to them, he said, please, my master, if I find favor in your eyes, don't pass your servant without coming in. Please come in. Take some water, please. Just wash your feet. Have like a small, small pit rest. You know, I don't want to disturb you on your journey. You're probably going somewhere very important and you don't have time. But let's just do a quick, a short one. A little bit of water, a little bit. Of and then he says, I'll give you some bread. Just eat your food, and then after that, you can go afterwards. Now it seems to be that Avram doesn't want to trouble them, and he's inviting them in very politely. Now you see, what's he offering them? Yaakov, what, what do you offer them to eat? Refreshments. Refreshments. But what does the pasuk say? The pasuk says two things. Mind the lechem. Bread and water. Mind the lechem. My Velechem is two very simple things, right? Just basic water. It was just water even to wash your feet and just bread to eat. But what did he do in the end? Let's continue. He says, okay, if you insist, we're coming in. Pasuk Vav. What does it mean, Vayimaher? And he 
quickly. He rushed. Right? Okay. He was, he rushed. He's in a rush. So you see over here, he's like he's against the clock. He's very busy over here. He's, he's running around. <laughs> he ran to Sarah. What's Mari? Rush. Rush. I wanted to fill three, uh, three, same uh, kemach is like three kilos of flour, three amounts of flour. So let Lushi Vasil God go and make what's all got? Okay. Okay. So you say already, you see Abraham, he was offering them bread, and now he's already getting out cakes. Okay. So I don't know what, if you can imagine what kind of cakes they're making. Maybe Sfinjim, no. yeah, or a Merogla, or you know, more, um, but he's making something more fancy than bread. Or matzahs. Or matzot. Solet is the best type of flour. So he's making something good. Now he's. He's offering him simple food and refreshments, but in the end comes out the good stuff. Pasuk Zayn, Ve'ela Bakar. Ratz Avram. Ratz Avram. Ren. So what do you see? Oh, so you see again, what is he doing? Descriptive words. He's in the wrong... Uh, words. Right. Yeah, so I don't know if you were thinking, why is he wearing uh, Nikes or, um, I've got, or I've shoes? Got I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Well, it's like, I want to say, we're going to come to you with an idea. Just let yeah, finish the Pasuk. I've got an idea. Ben Bakar at Avram, Vayikach Ben Bakar, and he took a young um, um, calf, Rach Batov, a nice soft um, uh, calf, Vayiten al Anar, and he gave to his son, Vayimaher la Soto, Vayimaher la Soto, and he ran to do it. So, I just want to make one point, and then we're going to hear Yaakov. The point of here, look what he's getting. He's, he's getting them Ugotis cakes. He's getting them um, steaks, it looks like. He's getting out cops, like oh. the best things he's giving out. And this has become a... He's, he's coming, bringing out the, the best food for them. And it doesn't say, like, if you're trying to invite someone to come in, so you say, listen, you want to come over for dinner, we're having lamb, we're going to have uh, steaks, we're going to have... You invite them with the best stuff. He doesn't say, listen, we're just having some bread. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you want to come for bread? I'll, make you, uh, I'll come over for dinner, we'll make you a sandwich, yeah? It doesn't even sound like a sandwich, it's just a piece of bread without a mm-hmm. sandwich, it's just like plain bread. And then he's coming out, and Rashi says he bought that mustard and his butter, and uh, he's making a big event. So why didn't he say that in the beginning? Because he did, they, he thought if he says something like, too, like he's going to give them too many things, they think, oh, we're imposing. Well, better not, no, no, no. But he said, come for bread, and he said, how hard it is for someone to prepare bread. They, they're not going no. out the way for him. So once he got them nice. into the house, he's like, here you go, here's a suda. Oh, very nice idea. Yeah. See, like, oh. you can like, take a lesson on to invite the guests at home. Yeah, just there's no trouble, just come in. And, uh, and then you come out and bring out the best, you do the best for them. Okay, very so nice that's my my, my thought is, you, you opened up with God was present in the, in the, in the tent. Yes, right? yes. Now, God's in that tent, and suddenly, three strangers appear out of nowhere. So, there, these are no three strangers. God's in the tent with Avr- with Avram, and these strangers appear. So, they're not going to be just anybody. They're going to be somebody. Uh, Avram realizes that. You know, you've got three strangers who are going to join Avram and God in the tent. They're not going to be, um, you know, Joe Bloggs and his mates who have come. It's going to be somebody special. So, Avram right. being aware of this is going to throw a, a feast, perhaps. Perhaps. Okay, that, but it does seem, though, it does seem that this wasn't one act of excellence from Avram Avinu. This was. This is how he used to do things. He, he used to do it like that. This is like the standard uh, event. He was in, he would stop people, I guess, just come in for a drink, and then you see he puts out the best thing, the whole table is out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, takes out everything, puts it all on the table, makes it feel at home, feel comfortable, yeah. enjoy it. That was his... He, Avram Avino is Midat Chesed. Like he is yeah, the pillow. But how do you get rid of waste? What do you do? There's like so much left over. Like, uh-huh. you know, I always love to do it, but then what do I have to do? I have to eat it afterwards. Like, <laughs> it's not like they can eat all the fish. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I want to come to the point of... There, there's a there's a Rashbam. It says Rashbam said a different approach. What do you mean, Ma'at He was just saying, listen, I'm offering you something small, and then he offers them a lot more than what he says. 
So there's a concept. Also in Akedah, Vayashkem Avraham, and it's it's it is a pattern by definition. It is okay that. Uh, but, but, no, but wait, Gilad, I want to say that, uh, he he's saying the concept of Amor Ma'at Ve'aserbe, which means you you say a little bit and you do a lot, right? So you come over, you say, please, Kina, come just for something like for refreshments. And then you bring out, you bring a beer, maybe you think, wow, this is what you call refreshments. See, that's a tzaddik, he says a little bit, but he does a lot. And there's some, the Rashaim, we see in next week's parasha with F1, exactly the opposite. They talk a lot, yeah, and they talk a lot, and they talk a lot. Hashem doesn't say that. Hashem? Hashem doesn't say a little and do a lot. He says, like what he's going to do and then he does it. Yeah. Like, say, you, like in the Shema, if you listen to me, then your wine will come in the right time and you'll, you'll be satiated and la la And if you don't, you won't. Doesn't say, that's not a little. He like, kind of says the whole. Yeah, but I'm saying the Mishnah says that. You will die. You don't die because you do Kapara. You do Chuba. And you know. That's even worse. I don't know if you have a. Now he's saying lots and not doing. You know, there's people that they always talk about what they're going to do. No, yeah, they're going to do, I'm going to build, I'm going to make, I'm going to do. They're talking, they're talking, they're talking, right? And they're like, okay, you're five years later, what have you done? No, we didn't do anything in the end. Well, what was all talk about? You got everyone puffed up and, everything, and you didn't do anything in the end. So said, that's not the Midah. The Midah of Abraham Avinu, well, it wasn't a big talker. It was a big doer. And you see, he did things by movement. You saw how fast he was moving to get things done. He said, it just a little bit. Things done. So that's one already, one message to do. The second thing was, and you see over here that he didn't want to put them out of their way. He promised them, I'm going to just do something small. So, because he didn't want to inconvenience them, he had to do things quickly, right? Imagine in there, they got their bread, okay, now we're leaving. He said, okay, thank you for the food, they're gone. No, no, wait, my wife's still just making the, the spin gym. I uh, um, just got my, my son is going to shake the, the para, the steaks are going to be ready, wait, just wait another few minutes. They said, listen, uh, we've, got, we've got a camel to catch and I've got to be out of here. So, because he told them just to come in for a few minutes, he had to get everything done quickly. There is the Rajbam says this approach. Yeah, but how does he make bread in a few minutes? He takes hours. I don't know, but maybe they're talking about pito or lafo to you know, take a few seconds to make. No, you need it to rise, though. You need the bread to rise. Um, so then, if you have been in Matzah, no, but, no, but, no, but it was, it was Matzah, it was in Pesach. <laughs> oh, so, very good. so first of all, uh, that's right, I was born called from Pesach. I don't know if you have been in the Matzah Baker factory, but I've been from flour to Matzah, about four minutes. Yeah, yeah no, I've done it. Okay, so what about them? How, how did you prepare the, the yeah, steaks? The it has to be, what's it called? Uh, like, uh, it'll be raw. Sorry? It'll be raw, raw steaks, or rare at least. It won't be even me medium <laughs> rare, it's too long already. It could be why they're washing their feet yeah, until they wash their hands and start eating. Already by the second course, it gives them a bit more time. But what about with animals? You have to leave it for 24 hours yeah, before you eat it. Like you have to drain the blood, the meal, uh, and then you have to sort it. Uh, yeah. You have to cast it, it takes 24 hours. No, well, but that, yeah. before we... Because, he, he, he was afforded the, the ability to do things super quick. Assuming there's a point to this about how long it took him to make the food. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just yeah, saying, I'm like, you asked him to come in for a piece of bread, and then he goes yeah. slaughters animal when it takes 24 yeah, hours for it to be kosher. Maybe he to move on. So how did he, he even he manage it? Like, Perhaps he did want them to stay longer for some reason we don't know yet. I don't know. Uh, observation. This, um, Aurea was saying about the resort in Vesilat Yisharim. And you see the something special about running towards the mitzvah. And in fact, the Shulchan Aruch also brings down when you're going to shul, a mitzvah, when you're going to shul, there's a special mitzvah to run to shul, right? Now imagine you, you know, you're driving your car to shul. Also on, also on Shabbat. Also on Shabbat. Oh, what's a jerk, Ad? I can't walk in the morning for sure. Does, does putting no, the... So does, no, 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 does putting the pedal down slow. count better? Let's say you take tomorrow morning, you go to shul, you're taking your car, 
Okay, you park next to the shul. Okay, so now you're five. Let's say you're, you've got the best parking space, and you're five meters away from the shul. So then you have a special mitzvah from your car to the door. Instead of walking, you take two or three steps to run. Now, do you understand that? Now, why is that? Why is that? I mean, I've been sitting in my car, or I've been walking for however long, and now there's a, there's a mitzvah to do a, a few steps to run. Mm-hmm. Rushing to the mitzvah, it's, yeah, the, it's, the, it's, it's, it's the, a given. One of the things it is, is it's the experience. Oh. When you put that into your system, the difference between the running in and the walking in, it, it, it like changes the way you, you approach the mitzvah entirely. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's 100% right. Oh, yeah. And I have to understand this. So the Sefer Chinuch, also the Mesilat Yisharim, and all the Sefarim, they all talk about this concept of the Chitzoniot in Mashpi al The way you act on your exterior, that affects your, your interior. The way you act, let me just explain. If you act with some with enthusiasm, physically, you're running towards something, then that will have an influence on the way you feel about it. You feel more more passionate about it, and you will be more excited about doing it. Think and, and, also, with, and, well, and also, and and that's obviously ignoring the the idea of someone else looking at you, because if someone else looking at you running to show, that creates well, another a stronger effect on your on your image. That's also true. Yeah, let me just explain the concept as well. One. No, we need a shilab, wait, wait. Well, it's, like reinforce, it's like reinforce the behavior. Mm-hmm. No, I, mean, yeah, so I, the I just want to explain one thing. If you're excited to do something, you want to go, you want to go on a trip, um, you're excited to do it, you, 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 you're happy to do it, you run towards it. Right? Imagine you've got you know, a special uh, meeting with uh, someone exciting, you know, you're looking forward to it, you're, you, you're, you're moving fast towards it. And that's natural. Naturally, you're moving fast towards it. And if you, if you, let's say you're not looking forward to something, right? You've got a test, or you need to find out your test results. I don't know what. So you're, you're moving very slowly. No one's running to go pick up that, you know, the the test or to go to the test. Only something you're excited about, you run for. So first of all, we're showing that we're excited to go to shul. We're excited to go to Pona to fill in. And the second thing is that when we actually run towards it, even if it's just a few steps. That already has an influence on the way we feel. It already got our adrenaline moving. You've got your blood running. And what Gilad was saying, someone sees you excited to go to a mitzvah. You, I've got to go to a shiro. Yeah, yeah, I've got to run. Okay, wow, you got to run. You know, you ever see someone? Okay, I've got to run. The, the game starts at 7.30. I want to be there at the beginning of the game. Yeah. <laughs> We're excited about the game. You see, everyone's really excited about being in the beginning of the game. What about the beginning of the tefillah? You're excited to be there in the beginning? Huh. So when you when you run towards it, that makes your enthusiasm. Now I want to point your point uh, make your observation is on the parsha over here. You know, one of the things as parents, we always try, we always want to instill our children with the uh, with the love for the, the the Torah, love for our tradition, you know, the love for our mitzvot. And you think, you know, how can I get my son? To be excited to come to shul. You know, how can I get my son to be excited to come to shul Torah? Really, really, how you do it, uh, Rabbi? Really, how you Sweet. do it? Yeah. That's Ramba. Always Ramba says so sweet. Ramba said this nuts, but, but being nuts, excited it. yourself and your kid sees it. Oh, oh thank you. Oh. Uh, that, thank you, Oriel. When the when the child sees you excited about. Going to shul, he's excited about going to shul. If he sees you excited about watching uh, Man United, he's going to be excited about watching United. And the way your way your child be, sees you, that is called dogma ishit. You see, you're showing him a personal example. He sees what you're excited about. Are you excited about your car? Are you excited about your holiday? Are you excited about your your shul Torah? You come, oh, that was amazing, Shiol, that was really good, yeah. And your son was, oh, I want to come. No, no, when you're older. Now, what does a child think? Oh, I really want to go, yeah? He's all excited about it because he wants to be the dad. And that's the same thing goes to what Gilad was saying. If someone sees you running, if someone sees you, that has an effect. It's a, 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 it's a mad big. I'm just saying. It's catchy. Contagious. Yeah, it's, it's catchy, it's contagious. You see someone excited about it, yeah, you're excited about Pasha. I want to learn Pasha, it's amazing, I want to go. That's contagious and that's catchy. 
And that's what you're trying to pass on to your children. Now look at this. Who's who's the child over here in the story? Ishmael. Who's the child? Nah? Ishmael. Huh? Who's the child? Ishmael. Now, how does Avram tell Ishmael? Does he tell him, listen, go go quickly, we've got guests, go quickly. Does he say that? He doesn't say anything. That's what the Prophet says. By 10. He was... By 10, he was... By 10, Think about it, the, the, just imagine Ishmael, he's a little boy at the time, okay, he's only 12 years old. Now, what's he doing? He sees, right, his dad, you can imagine Ishmael is sitting down, he sees his dad on the third day after Brit Mila, he's sitting over there on the couch, right? Suddenly he sees him like, boom, like he's like a panther, he's out there, yeah? He's like, he's, he's rushing out, he's like, hey, what's going on? Then he sees him, he's running around, he sees, he sees his uh, Sarah, you know, running around the kitchen, he sees everyone's busy. He's like, hey, what's going on? What's all the excitement about? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, why leave me out of it? I want to be involved, yeah? And as a child, he sees everyone rustling and everyone busy, everyone rushing, and he wants to be part of it. So when he gets the opportunity, and Avram says, okay, now you smile, now your job. Go you bring the meat, yeah? You see, in an instant, on his own, he already picked it up from home, and he's already run. And you see also now, even nowadays, you see the descendants of Ishmael. You see the the Arabs also in Arab countries, especially I don't know if you know if you visited Morocco or even some Arabs in Israel. They've got this the bidah from Avam Avinu of Achnasat Orchim. You see, they're very welcoming. You say Al Arani Al Arasi. Yeah, please come to my home. You know, the, the Arabs are welcoming. You see them, and where did they get that from? Ishmael. It's not. They don't get it from the Quran. They get it from Avraham Avinu. There's a descendants of Ishmael they got it from. So that's just one lesson I wanted to share with you that the example, by setting an example to your children of what you're getting excited about, that's how you pass on your love for the Torah. And I remember once somebody who was, uh, he was giving a lecture to like teenagers, right? And uh, I don't know if it was in someone's house or, you know, there was like a lady in the kitchen and all the, all the teenagers were there. In the shul, and he's trying, and he's saying to them, you know, none of you are, are, you know, none of you care about synagogue, none of you come to shul, none of you are excited about it. And he say, he says, you know why none of you care about it? Because your parents don't care about it. And then there was like a, a, a dish smashing in the kitchen, you know, and so someone dropped the plate in the kitchen. I was listening. But, but the truth is that that's how we pass on. You know, what is important to us, that's what we want to show our children. You know? And, you know, if we're busy, you know, we, when we're in the synagogue and we're, you know, texting on our phone because our business partners, right? Or when we're in the car and we're listening to a shiol in the car or when we're talking about, you know, what do we talk about? It's not what we do, it's how we do it. What do you do with the passion? What do you do with the excitement? That's how you pass on to your children. So we want to remember that we pass on the right messages to our children. And now Gilad is going to explain why he's smiling more than everyone else. Mm. <laughs> because because, because we're, they're laughing about me at home, about that. That, you know, when I, we talk about the why, and I say, you know, with yourself, who is Moshe, who is... <laughs> so the, it's like a, you know, a private joke we have, my family have. <laughs> okay. Okay, excellent. So In a positive way, yes, like, uh, of course. So you see, Avraham you know, he was an expert in mechanic. Now, what, how are we doing for time? Oh, we've already run out. We've already run out of time. I haven't even started this year yet. Okay. <laughs> let's just, well, let's just turn a few pages. Well, how comfortable is everybody? Yeah. Very. You guys. Okay. Oh, there's, 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 there's cows coming, right? And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're finished with the pat lechem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's let's move on a little bit. Let's move on. What happens? The next episode, we're going to skip it a little bit, but we're going to skip it a little bit. The city of Sodom. The city of Sodom. I want to look at the 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 story. We're just we're going to skip a little bit. Where is it? Oh, okay. Uh, I just want to do one concept about Avraham Avinu's discussion with saving the city of Sodom. So, 
Hashem has decided that it's game over for Sodom and he has to, you know, remove the city, delete the city. Before he does that, he approaches Avraham Avinu and he says, listen, Avraham Avinu, there's something that I'm going to do. And he just tells him about it. And Avraham Avinu now starts a negotiation. And what's his negotiating? He's trying to save the city of Sodom. Now I'm gonna I'm just missing out half the story and it all you know it needs a lot of explanation about the whole thing. But I want to just take out one point over here. What's the, the discussion of Avram Avinu with Akadosh Baruch Hu? And you see the Sukim goes that length. And and he, he actually talks to Hashem and he tries to convince him, you know, to maybe change your mind, maybe be safe. Why do you want to do it? And in the end he doesn't end up saving the city. Right? No. I don't know what Avram was thinking of in the first place. Imagine, you know, uh, Yaakov, uh, Hashem comes up to you and he said, listen, there's, uh, there's five major cities, right, in America. They're doing evil and corruption. And I'm just going to destroy them. And so, like, what are you going to say? What would you say? What would you say to God? Well, I, I, you know, I would say, what? No, no, I was going to say, um, where do we start? The consequence <laughs> of, of it, you've been asked the question, so you, you almost uh, feel that you have a responsibility for the loss of life because you, you're sort of participating in in the decision. God's come to to Abraham and said he's going to destroy something. So the reason why he's come to why didn't he just do it? Why is he even proposing the question? Okay, so it's a very good point you're making, Yaakov. Exactly. But let me just say, from my point of view, if Hashem would tell me that, I'll say, okay, you're God. If that's what He thinks right, but Chavod, you know. <laughs> Why are you involving me? If you think that needs to be destroyed, you know, you, you, I'm not going to try and convince you otherwise. This, uh, maybe you're going to reconsider. You know, I'm sure Hashem's worked out very nicely and he's got everything yeah. worked out properly. <laughs> and there's nothing I'm going to say suddenly he's going to change his mind. That's right, yeah. But you see, it's discussion. Now, first of all, after saying that, or before saying that, what Yaakov said was 100% right. Hashem came to Abraham for a reason. He didn't want him to tell him. Now she tells us they came for two reasons. One reason is that, first of all, it was Avraham Avinu's land. He promised him the land. And Avraham is called Av Hamon Goyim. He's like the father of all nations. I mean, if you think about it, all the major religions in the world, they all came from Avraham Avinu. The major religions, all the world, you know, most of the population of the world is descendants of Avraham Avinu. So now when he comes along and he wants to destroy some of his children, so obviously he's going to talk to Avraham Avinu first about it. Yeah, but Saddam wasn't his children. Not his children. Not his children, but in a way, uh, in a way, he was concerned for them. And you see the way that he asks to save their life, even though maybe they were corruption. But you see, he had the love for all people, and even you know, even people that he didn't know, even strangers, people who. But they were know. just wicked. They were playing wicked. The things that they did in Saddam was like, if someone did it nowadays. Right. Like you want to put him on a tree in the. Exactly. Yeah. But you see, Avraham Avinu, just let's try to understand where his point of view is. Uriel is saying, wicked people, so why let them die? Right? That's what you're saying. No, it's but, not that. But, like, I mean, if someone comes to me and says, we got this, uh, you know, like, list the top 10 disgusting things a man can do, and says to him, we're going to kill him. Do you want to defend him? I wouldn't personally like. Well, that's what I'm saying. You're saying embarrassing, people. even though he might be a relative of yours, and you know he's a really good person at heart, but he was just drunk, and but he did those things, and you can't deny let me, it. Like, let me let me. There has you. to be some retribution. You can't just tell someone that was really disgusting, whatever. So like, I really was the these worst people, crimes in history. These these are deep criminals, and they did uh, the the most corrupted city was Saddam. And Hashem decided to destroy them. So, why not kill them? That's what Oriel is saying. Now, I'm saying to you, Oriel, imagine that person that you're saying, the criminal. He was, I'm not saying he is, but let's say you were his father. And he's your son. And Hashem is saying, okay, he's done terrible things. So, you say, I'm going to kill him. Me? <laughs> no, it, I know. Yeah. I said it's hard when it comes to those types of things, but you can't... So let me Perhaps my, yeah. perhaps my memory but shows so me sometimes not. you like there are a lot of fathers well 
Well, every serial killer that ever had that happened in America had a father. And I'm almost sure some fathers would say, please lock him up. I mean, how much I love him, it's dangerous to keep him about. But, but, you but, know? Perhaps my memory doesn't it's serve dangerous. me so well, but I, I don't think, from what I remember, I don't think he actually says, save anyone bad. Oh, so it, it, we're going to discuss one second. We're going to discuss how he's talking about. Let me just address this point. Avram Avinu, he saw all people of the world as his children. That's how he saw them. And he saw the love that he had for every person, that he would just welcome him. And he doesn't matter what background he is, where he comes from. Are you hungry? Please come in and eat my food. Are you tired? Please come in and rest. And he saw that he would do... He, that's how he treated everyone. And when Akadosh Baruch now wants to wipe out and kill people in his land, which he promised Avram Avinu, he comes to Avram Avinu first. He says, listen, this is what I'm going to do. So Avram Avinu tries his best to save them. And he's now in the narrative. Now, what I want to study with you is just these three psukim of how he talks to Hashem. And I want to see from here, I think there's a, a tremendous lesson for us to learn. Because, you know, as, as religious Jews, every day we talk, we're speaking to Hashem. And we pray to Hashem. And, you know, there's things that we're asking for. So I want to learn from here, you know, what's our approach in prayer? Does that make sense? All right, I want you to turn to Pasuk. Oh, I lost the place, I'm missing. Oh, excellent. What he said, you Sorry. Yeah, Perak Yudchet. Yudchet, Pasuk Yudchet. Mm. I want to get the Yeah, let's just let's just do this first. The Pasuk says, He's going to be great. He's going to be a great nation. And he's going to be powerful. All the inhabitants of the world will be blessed by him. Through Avraham. This is God talking to Avraham about Avraham. And then he says, I know he's going to command his children, Vet Beto and his house, and Shamru Derech Hashem. I know Avraham Avinu, he's going to keep the way of Hashem. I want everyone to understand this Pasuk, because this is really the central Pasuk in the whole parasha, and that really teaches us what we're supposed to be doing as descendants of Avraham Avinu, why Avraham Avinu was so special, and why he stands out, and why God decides to confide in him. And to share with him his plans. I don't know about you, but God never told me what he wants to do. And okay. now he's coming up to Avram and telling him his plans. Now let's try and understand word for word. Pasuk Yutet. I know. He's going to command his descendants, his sons, and all his household after him. What's Veshamru Dera Hashem? No, keep to what Hashem. They would be. They will keep the way of Hashem. Wait, now what does it mean, Tzedakah Mishpat? Doing charity and justice. Justice and justice. charity. This is, this is, Leman Abi Hashem, Al Abraham and Tashay Dibir Allah. Torah and Maasim Tovim. Oh, wait a second, one second. Let's just put it in proportion. What does it mean, Tzedakah Mishpat? There's two things over here. Tzedakah is your giving, right? And you're giving, um, Generously, I would say, and maybe even unjustified. Does that make sense? What is tzedakah? Someone comes along, and he says, "Please, I need money." So, what's tzedakah? You give him money. Does he deserve it? No. You don't. You don't know. You don't judge. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. Is it justified that you should give him money? Do you have to give him money? If if you if you have to. Yeah. Do you have to give money? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. How you're judging, you just give. If you if someone needs you give. If someone needs you give. That's mitzvah of the car. If you if you if he needs you give. But it doesn't mean that you're justified. And I'm just saying that the mitzvah of the car is in some ways opposite of justice. And how does he come in the same sentence? Avraham Avinu is the and Mishpat. 
How can you be chesed? You're giving out every Arab on the street. He's done nothing to you. He didn't work for you. He doesn't deserve it. You decide you want to be kind. You've done a very good mitzvah. And even if he doesn't deserve it and you've given him, you've done your mitzvah. But how does Tzedakah come into Mishpat? How does Avram Avinu represent Tzedakah in Mishpat? And in fact, you know, this is one of the terms we call Akadosh Baruch Hu Tzedakah or Mishpat. Yeah? Or Seh Tzedek or Mishpat. Now I just want to think about that for a minute. Maybe sometimes when, like, uh, like even though you don't deserve it, you ask Hashem, just please, like, have mercy and give it to me, even though I don't deserve it, but still, like, you know, I would like to have the hand of mercy and, uh, you know, and have that charity. I, like, I, I, I've yeah. got some justice against me where it's justice, but then, at the end of the day, you ask God for that mercy where even if someone you don't know deserves the money and you would just hand him out money because, you know, he asked, you give, you give the sadaka, you give the charity. Sometimes when it's with you as well, you, you're, it's justified to have some sort of punishment. But you ask God for mercy and not to look to see if I deserve it or not and just give chesed instead. All right. Okay, so you mishpat, is, uh, mishpat is, is, is from a show which, uh, it's out of uh, uh, justice, or it's mishpat like mishpatim, like to do mitzvot, like. Ah, so that kind mishpat. So here, I don't know. So here seems to be justice. That's why I know, we understand it. Okay. And go on. So after you've given a saka, you take, you bring in the person, and you start telling them that, you know, that there really is uh, something wrong, and you need to start to fix it, come, there's a God who runs the world, and which is what he would do, he would start converting people. Mm. Again, again, mate, you're saying yeah. something good, go on. After you've given the tzedakah, you help them, yeah. so then you, you yeah. bring them in, and you start telling them, you know, there's a God who runs the world, and and we, we kind of owe him our lives, and we have to follow him, and these are his ways, and, and you know, there, there is a, there's, a there's, there's some laws to follow. It's true, it's true. Okay, so this is really the point I want to say. And this is the lesson which we're supposed to learn from Avraham Avinu. What was the way Avraham Avinu, how did he do it? What was his agenda? On one hand, he's chesed and kindness. And he's very hosting and he's hospitable. And it's like, you know, it's a free house. It's a, um, what's it called? A, a soup kitchen. All right, everyone comes in here, everyone comes free food. But on the same time, Avraham Avinu, he was the, the represented truth. He's the one who discovered God and rediscovered it to any, everyone else in his generation. When he discovered, you know, who was, who was the creator of the world, how did he come into being? And that's how he got everyone in. He said, please come and have my food. And he says, you know, please eat. You have bread, okay, now have meat, have food. He gives them up their food and they enjoy their meal. And after they finish, are you still hungry? He goes, no, I'm finished. Are you sure you want more? Maybe take more. And after they finished, what did he tell each person? So did you finish eating? Did you finish eating? And he said, Amazon. And he said, what? He said, Berkat Amazon. He said, you have to, what's Berkat Amazon? He said, you have to pray to God for the food you ate. He said, who's God? He said, you ate, you ate God's food. You need to thank God for it. And that's how they started the discussion about it. He said, if you do, and he discussed about the belief in God, and that's how they would go, start talking about where the food comes from. And he said, it's not my food. You all you do be cut Amazon, or you pay for your food. And it's expensive. I'll give you the best meat. <laughs> so after the discussion, that's how we get everyone involved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give them something they can't afford to say. <laughs> yeah, so you do be cut Amazon. But the way Avraham Avinu did it was genuine. It was honest, it was truthful. And when you're doing something honest and truthful, people sense that. And when Avraham Avinu, you know, he saw that, he was bit, everyone saw that he was genuine because he was being very generous. You know, why are you giving out your, your best meats? You put out your best food, you put out your best everything from the table, why are you doing that? Obviously you care about me. And if someone that you really care about and you really love them, you want to see them doing the right thing. And that's when Abraham Avinu comes and teaches them. He says, listen, this is the truth. There is a creator to the world. We didn't just pop out here from the stars. 
No, no, there's no aliens that dropped us up on this earth and come to pick us up later. You know, there wasn't like an explosion and, you know, suddenly we all came around. You know, everyone's got ten fingers. But you just can't, there's nothing like that. You where to get intelligence from. There was a creator to the world. And that's how we go through it. And now we have to thank him for everything. And that's how Avama Vino got everybody. By being being honest. And when when you speak the truth, what well, what comes out from your heart that goes in, it penetrates. And that's what it means to the Kaum So when God chooses Avram, he knows that Avram is going to go and teach that to his generations, to his children. And you know, that's something that we need to remember. You know, there's people that we love and we're close to, and if we really care about them, then we should share with them the truth. It's to look at what you're missing, what a beautiful Torah that we have. For generations we've been keeping it for, you know, why you look at what you're missing out on. And that's the message here of Avraham Avinu of Tzedakah and Mishpah. And when you're doing the right thing, you can't miss out. This is why Avraham is now, he's the founder of our nation. You know, we're born from Avraham Avinu. Okay, um... So I'm, I'm missing out on another part. We're going to do one more, one more thing. Yeah. How does Avraham Avinu pray to God? So look at the Pasuk Chav Gimel. Okay, we're just keeping another few Pasukim again. Vigash Avram Vayomar. And in Rashi says, Vigash Avram Hashem approached, uh, Avram approached Hashem in prayer. Ha'af tispe tzadikim rasha. Are you going to destroy a righteous person with a, with a wicked person? And then he comes on to a whole discussion. Ula yesh hamishim tzadikim. It's like, a, it's like a bargaining, yeah? Uh, Abraham is trying to save the city. So how much is it going to cost me? 50 tadikim. Uh, maybe 45. Would you do it for 40? Would you do it for 30? This is the whole discussion. tadikim. Maybe you'll save the city for 50? He said, no, there's no 50. Well, there was okay. five cities, 10 in each. Yeah, so that, that was Rashi makes the cheshbon. No, no he makes uh, the calculation. God doesn't know if there is or there isn't. It just seems odd. Oh, so it, exactly. So I want to. Yeah, question. And this was bothering me a lot. And it's always bothering me the whole time. Mm. <laughs> well, what's what's Avram trying to do? Convincing to God. He's trying to convince him. Listen, maybe change your mind. Listen, you're looking at it in the wrong way. Look at it differently. You know, Hashem. Where, where, where's it? Where's it involved? I'm sure Hashem's thought of everything that Avram can think of, right? And everyone can think of. But you see, Abraham, Hashem actually wants Abraham to pray, and he's, 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 he's discussing it. He doesn't say, Abraham, shut up, forget it. I've decided what I'm doing, and this is what I'm doing. He doesn't say that. He, he answers him. Everything he says to him, he answers him. And then even so... No, but the thing is, Abraham has to agree, because it's the land belongs to Abraham. Hashem gave it to him. Yeah. So that's why he's praying. And no, Abraham would say, no, please do not destroy that city, no matter what. And Hashem will probably have to hold back, because... He's given something over to Avram, and Avram now has a decision. So that's why Hashem is answering back, uh, like answering, no, I still can't do it, I still have to destroy the city, there isn't, there isn't. And to Avram has to agree and say, okay, destroy the city. Is that what he says in the end? No, I didn't read it, I'm just saying. Like, that, that, that could have been I mean, if he's coming like to tell him, him and he's telling him the land belongs to Avram already, so yeah, but look, he has to agree. It's not like a God would say to him, now I've decided, I, de I thought I'll just tell you along the way that I'm destroying your cities and your land. Yeah, but like, that's, 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 that's not what it seems from the Pasuk. It doesn't seem like that. I'm trying to make an approach that it's our arms in charge. It doesn't seem like that at all. Rashi says quite clearly, you should know the beginning. And was, no, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't out of uh, asking permission from Avram. It was just it, um, out of courtesy. It's you know it's your land, and I know you care about these children, and I don't want to do something without telling you first. I just wanted to know this is what I'm doing. But why a whole page? Why a whole page? Why can there be one summary sentence? And they uh, he consulted Avram, and Avram asked him five times if he would reconsider. Okay, so, so I want to. Why repeat fifty, forty, thirty? What's the significance? You, well, not one word is wasted in the Torah. So why? Use one page or well, on the he has page. ten in each city. 
All right, then he would say five cities, and then he said 45, so he has nine yeah. in Hashem. Well, why, the the length? why the length, though? Why is it so long? Why are you repeating it? Why do you have yeah, to mention all of that? So that, yeah, that is, listen, yeah. that is a justified question. I've got, a, I'm not I've gonna, got an idea. I'm not going to answer everything, just because we're, we're out of time. You know, but I want to draw your attention to a point which is very important, and the way that we should be praying. And I think this is what you know the Torah is teaching us the way Avram is discussing with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. So I want to look at the look at the Pusuk. And we see this a few times in the Torah. We see it also by Moshe Rabbeinu and we see it also by Hana. What Let me just find it. Rabbi, I'm going to go. Okay, thank you, Joe. Thank you for joining us. Hi. So I had one idea. Just one, just in a minute. Just let me just say this point. I'm going to lose it. Yeah, so just come to Chav Dalet and Chav Hey. I just want to do these two psukim with you, okay? Avram is speaking to Hashem. He said, are you going to really destroy a tzaddik, a righteous person with the rasha? Maybe there's 50 people in the city. Are you not going to save the city for these 50 righteous people? Which are in it. You're going to destroy 50 people? Now what's wrong with that? Now this is the main pasuk. Look at this pasuk chafei. This is Avram's argument with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. This is you don't want to do this. Avram is saying, God, God, don't do this. Think about it. <laughs> 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 so you don't want to be doing this. Lamit tzadikim rasha to kill a righteous with a tzadik with rasha. Vayak tzadik rasha. You're gonna make it equate a tzadik and rasha. Chalil lecha. Hashafet kol aretz, the one who judges the whole world, lo hayasem ishpat is not going to do justice. And let's just stop there. Just stop there for a minute. Let's just think about it. What's Hashem telling Abraham? What's Abraham saying to Hashem? He's not saying, listen, have mercy on them. Uh, it's my children. Come on, forgive them. He's not saying, you know, maybe they'll do tshuva afterwards. You know, it's not their fault. You know, if they were born like that, you know, they, it's their influence. So they had mm-hmm. bad friends. He's not saying that. He's saying, listen, it's not good for you. God, I, I appreciate that, you know, it might be right for them, but for you, it's not good. It's, it's going to give you a bad reputation. What does it mean? Think about it. Everyone's going to say, oh, the God of the whole world, the judge of the world, is not going to do justice. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not good for your PR. It's not good for your image. Everyone's going to say, oh, you're not justice. Well, what am I saying here? I'm, I'm going to say that Avraham <laughs> Avinu is saying to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, how is he saying prayer? He said, "Listen, I don't care about me. I don't care about him, about about the people of Sodom. I care about you. What are people going to say when they see you destroying Tzadik and Rasha? It's going to look bad for you. He said, well, Hashem, okay, why should I be a Tzadik now? Hashem's going to kill me anyway with all the Rashaim around me.'" It's just made Avram drop that, harder. That, that's what we do, like, all of Yom Kippur, that's what we do. Like, so, 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 so that's, really, that's really the Mishpat, that's being able to say the truth. That's what, like, the whole of, the whole of Yom Kippur is all we do for, for all our prayers. Uh, do, do, it for, do it for you, do it for you. Do this for us, but do it for you. Do this, do this, do this oh, for okay. you. So, this is exactly the point Mayor is saying. And you see over here that... that uh, Hashem accepts Abraham's argument. He accepted 100%. He said, you're right, I'm not killing a tzaddik with Rasha, but there's no tzaddik. There's no 50 tzaddikim. There's not even 40. There's no 30. There's no 20. There's no 10. You're right in your argument. I wouldn't do that. But you're wrong in your facts. And that means that this is the way to pray to Hashem. The way you pray to Hashem is not, uh, have uh, save the kids, you know, save the people of Saddam, uh, do it for my children, do it for the future. And I'm saying now like this, when we we're all in our personal lives, so let's come back now to 11 uh, Edward Street, where are we? <laughs> Wrong place, is it? Where? 
Gr- grants gr- close. Grants close. We're 11 grants close. Okay, now we're all sitting on the table. Now we're all going to go home in a few minutes. And we'll go back to our lives. And then we think, you know, oh, you know, everything's almost perfect in my life. Yeah, I've got a lot of good things. But uh, there's one thing I'm missing. It could be better, yeah? Now, where are you going to get that from? Now, when you come into a project, Kaddish Baruch Hu, tomorrow you're going to put on your tefillin. And you say to Hashem, listen, I need this. Now, what's the approach? How are you going to say to Hashem? Listen, give me it because you gave everyone else. Okay? Or uh, give it to me because I've been waiting for a long time. Or give it to me because I really want it badly. Or give it to me because, you know, I'll give a lot to the car. I'll give a lot to the car to the shul. Neither. <laughs> way you, the way you pray is you say, Hashem, you listen, I need it, but not for me. I need, I need it for you. I need it for you. I'm going to do it for you. Listen, I need, uh, well, let me give me an example, okay? Uh, I need a job. I need a good job. Why do I need a good job? Listen, Hashem, I, I'm not being greedy. It's not for myself, but I want to be living in a Jewish neighborhood. It's expensive in God. It's green in Hendon. It's expensive. I need a good job. He said, please, Hashem, um, I need, I, want, I need to go buy a high house. Listen, I've got family, I've got children, they want it's a bedroom. And if I've got guests, I want to have guests. It's a mitzvah to have guests. So I need it for you. Listen, I'll get the altar. That is the way you do it. You know, a person wants to get married. Why do they want to get married? Listen, it's nothing, nothing, listen, Hashem, nothing to do with me. But for you, I want to build a house. I want to teach my children Torah. I want to teach them how to grow. Listen, it's for your best interest. And when you take to a Kaddish Baruch Hu like that, that's what Hashem wants to hear. You're here for His. And Hashem says, listen, if you're working for me, okay, you've got all the best terms and conditions. I'll give you everything where you need to work for me. But you've got to show that commitment. I'm here and I want to do it for you. And this is why I'm saying, listen, I'm not concerned about myself or about the people. I'm concerned about your own image. And you see also, you see that with Moshe Rabbeinu when he prays for Amisrael. I think he said to sit And... Um, and you see that uh, Hashem didn't argue with him in his in his uh, argument. He didn't say, uh, Avraham Avinu, don't worry about me, I'm fine, yeah? <laughs> Let, let's deal with the children. He didn't say that. He said, you're right, I wouldn't do it, but there's no Tzadikim, my facts are wrong. So that is, I think, is a very important lesson that we want to be learning from here. And there's one other point, and I think uh, maybe someone mentioned it, and then maybe it was Uriel or... I think it was Uriel. But you may look at Pasuk Chavzayin. Vayan Avraham, Vayan Avraham Vayomer, Vayomar, and he says, Hine na ho alti le daber el adoni, Vayonohi afava efer. Bachavod Mao, can you translate for me? To read the next one? Translate. No, just translate the pasuk. Vayan. Avraham answered to Hashem, I wanted to speak to to you, to Hashem. And I am... Uh, I would like to speak to Hashem. So, uh, why are you just mentioning that you're dust and ashes? What, what's that about? Because it's not for him, for, not for his own good. No, so I just want to mention, but is an expression of humility. He says, listen, Hashem, I'm nothing. Listen, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm Avraham Avinu, you know, Avraham Avinu, uh, king of all the, of all the world. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not running the show. Listen, I'm dust and ashes. I'm, I'm nothing. And I don't care about myself. I'm not you. It's, it's humility. And when you're approaching to Akadosh Baruch Hu in prayer and tefillah, the first thing you need to do is you realize, you know, how small we are. And that's also another thing that Mesilat Yisharim says, um, when you're coming to tefillah, you're supposed to imagine how great Akadosh Baruch Hu is and how small you are, right? Who was the person who had the most connection with Akadosh Baruch Hu, the greatest man that ever lived? Tzadik al Kodesh. Moshe, Moshe, Moshe. It was Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu. Who was, who was the most humble man? Moshe. It was Moshe Rabbeinu because it goes together. With the more humble you are, Moshe. A linear correlation. Moshe. <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu, the greatest leader, he was the closest to Akadosh Baruch because he realized how small he was in comparison to Akadosh Baruch So the humility aspect is how you come knocking to Akadosh Baruch door. I mean, imagine somebody knocking on your door, okay? I don't know, you know, if you get people collecting in your house, I don't know how it is. But imagine, all right, someone coming, knocking on your door, please open, and you're okay, what do you need? 
And he starts shouting at you and he says, listen, uh, give me to the car, I need your money. Uh, it's like, listen, where's the respect? Yeah, I come with humility, come. I will say, uh, just slam the door. <laughs> huh? I will just slam the door. The way you come to Akadosh Baruch Hu, he says, listen, you don't come to Hashem. Okay, Akadosh Baruch Hu, listen, Shabbat, I keep being Shabbat. I eat kasher, I put a filin. Now, where's your side? Yeah, I've done my part. What about you? Yeah, that's not the way you dress to Akadosh Baruch Hu. <laughs> Can you imagine, yeah, what is Hashem going to do when you say that to him? Yeah, imagine, imagine, yeah, you know, oh, someone comes, knocks on your door, he says, oh, I'm flying in all the way from Israel, I'm collecting for my yeshiva, I need the money, now give me the money, yeah? You didn't send it back home. The way you approach a Kodesh Baruch Hu is not with your own credit and with your own values. You say, Anochi Afar Be'efer. You say, listen, I'm nothing. I don't know, I'm not worthy, and I'm not worthy, not deserving to ask from you. But, a Kodesh Baruch Hu, you're the greatest. There's no one great for you. And for you, it's nothing, why you can sort me out easily. Listen, you get, you get... <laughs> You know, maybe I'm a difficult person, yeah, and uh, I'm a bit difficult person to live with. Maybe you're not going to find someone to match me. But listen, you managed to find everyone else in the world to get married, so you can get me married as well. You find someone for me as well. Rabbi, Shem, you can... surely there's no technique to how one prays to God. Um, no, there's, there's no or, individual. Or there's no formula, but there are principles, okay? And this is the two fundamental principles that we're, we're saying now tonight in prayer. The principle no, number one, was is the humility in front of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. There's no demanding from God. There's no, no, it's all right, it's your turn. There's no, it's, it's number one is humility. And does that mean come to a Kaddish Baruch Hu? The second aspect is when you're praying, and this is a technique brought down by all the, all the Mekubalim, is that when you pray, you don't pray for yourself. You include a Kaddish Baruch Hu or Am Yisrael in, in a Cheshbon. Say, so listen, I want to do it. I need a big house because I want to have a lot of guests. That's a very genuine reason. And you can mean it generally, you can say it. Now you can say you also want to be comfortable. That's also you have to mean it, otherwise you probably take it away from you. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Like people uh, come for overnight, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh God, I want a big house so you know that I can have a lot of guests and then he gets a big house know. and he like locks the door and no one's allowed in and he's made a swimming pool. Say, and... say, you know you can't you can't fool Hashem. There's no prison yeah. for Hashem. <laughs> Hashem knows what you're doing and what you're doing. But you can mean it genuinely. And you can have both intentions at heart. And as long as you mean generally, you can use it in prayer. So let's just use a, do a quick summary of what we learned tonight. Um, we learned tonight about Khanasat al and uh, especially for Ma'o. And I want to say something about Ma'o, that even when the Shia is not in his house, but he's always there to bring in the, the snacks and the food for the Talmudim and takes care of everyone. No one. So I think this is also the time to thank him for that. Yeah, and I think he's the first person to have the Shia of a second week running in his home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hosting the show. And this is the Gadol So we wish Hashem we will bless you in the house and a bigger Amen. house to start Hashem to have uh, more Amen. people in the Shio as the Shio grows. Amen. Uh, result of a mitzvah. How to do things fast and actions and how that influences your character and how it influences your feelings about doing something. And the way you portray your enthusiasm is what you pass down to your children, what you get excited about. You know, you, everyone remembers their father was excited about uh, fishing or stamps or football or, or Moshe Rabbeinu. Yeah, whatever you're excited about, that's what you're going to be excited about. I'm looking at Gilad again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that was what was it, Tzedakah and Mushpat. Tzedakah was, you know, being generous and being given, but also being truthful. And just as you offer, Asha, Abraham offered them food. But he also demanded of them the truth. You have to thank who the food came from. It wasn't just come from nowhere. Um, and also, when you're doing the right thing, you have to believe in it. You know, if you got a guest at your table, you say, "This is what you should use. You know, you never have to be embarrassed and or shy to uh, to tell a guest at your table to do bikkat mazon. You got someone there, you say, "Listen, in my house, my food. I want you to respect me today." And yeah, if that starts off a discussion about God, then you know, maybe that's an opportunity. You don't know what you might gain from that. But you do generally do it honestly and it will be accepted. Um, we learn about the way you pray to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. The two methods that we said that Avraham Avinu approached the Kaddish Baruch Hu in uh, genuine in humility and in uh, in compassion and being considerate of from a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Put, put, it in here, put it on his side. Be on his side of the team. You know, you're working for him. He said, Hashem, I'm here for you. I want to do the best for you. I, I need these things. I need to have a good job if I want to support my family and I want to pay Jewish education. 
Jewish education costs money. And if I want private lessons and get them an extra Torah, I, I need the money for it. And if I want to be able to learn more Torah, I need less time on my job. So I need to have to have a successful business so I can be running well, so I can have more time for doing a chavruta and for learning Torah. And when you're creating Hashem in your, in your, in your requests, not coming from the one, that's the opening to be accepted. Um, thank you very much. I hope you all enjoyed the show tonight. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. We're looking forward for next week. Wish you all Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Thank you very much.